Welcome to the 5-Minute Legal Master Series, where expert attorneys help you master important legal topics. Today, board-certified creditor's rights attorney, Nicholas D. Crowley, discusses confession of judgment. Confession of judgment can be a very powerful weapon in a creditor's arsenal. From the debtor's point of view, it can be a very onerous remedy. One thing to keep in mind about confessions of judgment is that they can only be used in a commercial setting and for the most part never can be used involving consumer or a consumer account or a retail account. Uh, you may have heard of a confession of judgment uh, by different names. It's typically embodied uh, as a clause in a what's called a judgment note. Uh, you may have heard of it as a cognovit note. Uh, you may have heard of it as a warrant of attorney. Uh, in any event, regardless of the, the name you put to it, uh, each one of those documents would have a confession of judgment clause which provides certain remedies. Now, why did I say that that can be a powerful weapon for a creditor or an onerous uh, remedy against the debtor? For the simple reason is that a confession of judgment note uh, allows for the entry of judgment against the debtor obligor without any prior notice or hearing. Uh, typically, uh, a confession of judgment note or a judgment note uh, is used prior to the filing of a lawsuit um, the use of it uh, after a suit is filed uh, will be the topic of another legal master presentation, but I'm just going to look at it in terms of uh, using the confession of judgment note uh, before you're in, involved in a lawsuit. Uh, a judgment note or a confession of judgment clause is often used in establishing an account. Uh, it can be used in credit applications. It can be used in guarantees. And it can be used and has been used often in promissory notes as part of a loan transaction by a lending institution. Uh, it can be used also uh, by an attorney, we use them here often, uh, when a matter has been referred to counsel uh, for collection. This is a good tool, a judgment note, when payment arrangements are made by the debtor before it is necessary to file suit, presuming that the creditor who has referred the case for collection approves the payment arrangements. Uh, what a judgment note can do is that it memorializes the payment terms, sets forth the specific schedule, and it also, more importantly, sets forth the consequences that the debtor faces uh, in the event of a default in payment. The typical characteristic of a judgment note is the language uh, that is used to establish that consequence in the event of default. You may have heard of the, uh, the language that uh, says, uh, the undersigned hereby empowers any attorney of any court of record to appear for the undersigned and after one or more notices and after default confess judgment against the undersigned for the balance then due. Typically a, a judgment would be confessed uh, after a, a debtor has defaulted in payment. Uh, alternatively, you can negotiate uh, an arrangement with the debtor whereby the judgment can be confessed immediately in either event, the creditor would forbear from enforcing the judgment unless and until the debtor defaulted in its payment. You may want to use the immediate entry of judgment and forbearance if you are concerned about perhaps the debtor owning some real estate that she might transfer before the payment is fully made. Um, the immediate uh, entry uh, of the judgment, in quotes, amicably, uh, followed by payments, also makes the judgment a little bit more difficult to challenge. You know, if there is a history of payments made in strict accordance with the judgment note's terms, and then the debtor later defaults, it would be very difficult for the debtor to, you know, pull the tactic of, well, I'm going to challenge the entry of judgment. Well, he's established a history of what the payments are, are providing for, and what the note has provided for, and it seems to be right along with what has been agreed upon. Uh, what's required on a confession of judgment is that Obviously, the, the Confession of Judgment Clause must be conspicuous. You should include the language that the debtor has knowingly, voluntarily, and intelligently waived his rights to a notice and hearing prior to judgment, uh, and if counsel is present uh, in that negotiation, specify that it was with after consultation with counsel. Uh, the signature of the debtor uh, obligor must relate directly to the Confession of Judgment Clause. Uh, often you have the debtor sign in two spots. Uh, one right after the clause itself and one at the end of the note. Uh, you cannot hide or should not try to hide the confession of judgment clause on a separate page or in the back of a credit application 
and don't try to incorporate it by reference uh, in another document. So the bottom line of all of this is that a confession of judgment can be a very powerful weapon. Uh, use it wisely, know the requirements, and make sure you comply with the requirements to make it enforceable. Thank you. You've just heard The 5-Minute Legal Master, where expert attorneys help you master important legal topics. For more information on this and other topics, please visit 5minutelegalmaster.com.